Hi there guys, Metal Crusader here. So we're back with another video. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about uh, three bands, three releases as usual. And, well, it's just another collection update, if you want to call it like that. With this being said, let's start right away. The first album I'm going to talk to you about is from a band that... Um, I, I can't say I got into them or discovered them recently. Because, honestly, I've been a fan of them for quite a while. But I never paid them or the proper attention, let's leave it there. Uh, or gave them the proper respect. I'm talking about Death Spell Omega or Death Spell Omega, uh, however you want to pronounce it. This really is, I don't know if you can see the cover, this really, I think this is really, really dark. This is the Furnaces of Palingnesia, by the way. There is nothing underneath the, um, the album. I'm just going to show you the booklet now. It's a really, really cool booklet, by the way. I don't know, I, I like it when, when bands do booklets like this. So. Like I mentioned, um, Death Spell Omega is a band that I paid attention quite recently, uh, probably around 2018, 2017 is when I started to pay them the proper attention. With that being said, I really fell in love with the band, I really like the type of music they make, and this release really is no exception. If you don't know them, they hail from France. And I guess they can be called uh, avant-garde or uh, technical black metal, I guess something like that. It's because usually they are really, really on the experimental side. This release, however, uh, by the way, their seventh full length, um, released in 2019, last year and um, was released by Norma... Norma Evangelium Diaboli. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name of the label. A few differences from this release to, um, to the others. It is um, a less jazzy release, uh, so a bit more straightforward on that note. A little less experimentation present there, and it is um, an album that, especially on when it comes to lyrics, it starts to speak in a more direct way. Talking about lyrics, of course, directs me to talk about the vocals, which are really great. I really like the um, aesthetic, if you want to call it like that, chose for this particular uh, release and for the spell Omega as a whole, but however, you, while you're listening to all of the chaos that is going on in the background, all this controlled chaos with um, a lot of dissonant notes, a lot of stuff going on, you have this, almost, this vocal which is almost making a speech, um, not as much as singing, it appears just to be speaking uh, within the tempo of the, um, of the music, and it gives a really good uh, vibe to the, the music, it gives a really good um, feel to it, because you, you feel like you're being spoken to, you feel like you are being somewhat instructed. It's really, really, really cool, and I really enjoy the way they've done that. Uh, the vocals are, of course, filled with a, a lot of hatred in the... Um, and the vocals themselves, the riffs are just great. I can't complain about anything uh, guitar-wise, and honestly I can't complain about anything in this release. 
it's just a bit different from the, um, the other releases by, by this band. Some fans might not enjoy it as much. I personally love it. I personally consider it one of my favorite uh, Death Spell Omega releases. And as far as recommended tracks go, uh, I'm going to recommend you Ad Arma, Ad Arma, which is track 3. And Standing on the Work of Slaves, which is track uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, track 8. So, track 3 and 8 are my personal favorites from this release. And I really recommend you to, um, to listen to this album. And if by any chance you do not know about um, the spell Omega, well, do yourself a favor and go listen to them. I'm certain that you'll find something you will like on them. Um, oh, and by the way, this release might be a good starting point if you don't know the band, because production-wise it's clearer, and like I mentioned, it's not as experimental, not as jazzy, it's a bit more straightforward album, and by that can be a good entry point for the band, I guess. Okay, now moving on to another release from last year, this time a band from Austria and their first release. First, well, this band has uh, two members from um, Kringa, so I'm talking about, maybe some of you already realized, Axisa. Really, really cool. Band. And I really like this insert. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it like this. Now, it's just the traditional black vinyl, really cool artwork in the center, but not much more to be said. Uh, than that. Now, Axisa, or Axisa, let me see if I've already told you, they come from Austria, it's, um, this release is from 2019, as I've mentioned previously, and it's their first full length. It was released by Iron Boner, that's what I was missing, I haven't mentioned yet the label, which is Iron Bonnet Productions. Axis are a band that um, focus mainly on that um, old school and primitive sounding black metal, uh, almost um, first wave like black metal, but at the same time not quite. I, I guess one could say that it is um, first wave or old school black metal with a little twist, and I would say it falls somewhat lost between the first and the second wave, never falling too much to one of the two sides. Um, and honestly, it's a um, release that I find surprising, because it has been done so much trying to um, recreate that primitive and that old-school sound. It's an area which has been explored so many times before, that it is hard to um, go on and be creative and do new things in that um, particular area. And Axisa does precisely that. They create their own sound in a way without moving much away from this old school, this primitive um, music style. It has some uh, punk influences, as would be expected. Maybe, maybe I can say some trash influences. And uh, of course, a lot of early Norwegian black metal uh, influences. It's an album that I will definitely recommend you to listen. And with that being said, I'm going to recommend you True Tracks as usual. Okay, I guess Moonshine Glens and They Ride Along on the Howling Winds. Two great tracks from this album. They are track 3 and track 5, yes, track 3 and 5, and well, that's about it 
from, from these bands. Moving to the last release I'm going to talk about today, which is quite an interesting release, at least in my personal opinion. I'm talking about um, Wotain or Wodain or however you pronounce their name, Rabbit Death Curse. Just show you. There you go. It's a little gatefold. And it's this, this beautiful, beautiful crystal clear LP. I really, really like it, honestly. It was actually um, given to me as a gift. And it is part of a um, limited edition of 300 copies. So, really glad to um, get my hands on one. However, sometimes this. I was just spinning it before starting this this video and it is actually quite hard to place it back inside. Don't know why they made it like this. Now if you know black metal you know what they it's as simple as that. Uh, at least in my personal opinion. Um, this album in particular is their first full length it was released back in 2000 and according for what says here um, it was released in vinyl uh, 1000 copies by Endal Life however I believe the um, or I believe from what I read the um, label behind their first release or behind this release in particular was Drakkar Productions. This one in particular is a 2008 reissue by Season of Mist. Now, <coughs> Rabbit Death Scores. Like I mentioned, if you know anything or if you listen to black metal, at least you've probably heard the name Warren. And this album is quite different from what you might have heard associated with that name. Because, unlike the, um, the rest of Walden's discography, which is much more focused on um, a clearer production, or a, not clearer, but clearer than this one, and it is a distinct mark, it is a distinct work from anything else, uh, some might even call Walden a bit of... Um, commercial black metal, I truly disagree with that, but some people do call them that way. However, this release has nothing to do with that. This release has a much raw production, not raw, just raw, just um, a little more aggressive, a little less polished. It has a, a great focus on the riffs, it is just filled with fast power chords and a lot of tremolo picking. Some melodic passages go throughout the release and the vocals just fit like a glove on this, on this release. It is, um, like I, I mentioned, really, really different from the rest of Wolden's discography, or at least somewhat different from their discography and I believe that you should listen to this release just to, if you are already a fan, if you are already a fan of Odin, this is, in my opinion, a very important release from their career, because although it has a lot of um, that Norwegian or that early Norwegian scene influences present in there, it also already has something like staking saying you, telling you, sorry, <laughs> telling you that they are going to change direction, that they are going to do something different and something bigger. And then, eventually, as we all know, they evolve 
and they did something amazing. With all that being said, um, whether you're a fan from Uldane or not, I will recommend you this album if you enjoy black metal. Because whether you're a fan of Uldane or not, this album might be for you if you enjoy any type of black metal. At least that's my personal opinion. So take it for what it, take it for what it's worth. Now, as usual, I'm going to recommend two tracks. Okay, I guess it can be track four. Uh, sorry, three. Track three on horns impaled, and track five, walls of life ruptured. Really like those two, and well, it's Odin. It's great black metal, and it's um, fast. It's aggressive in a different way than they are right now. With this being said, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to leave the um, album links in the description, so if you want to check them out, go ahead. And, well, I guess that's it for today. See you on the next video. Until then, keep your horns up.